Welcome back to Project SureFund. Join us as the 23 Albee Brothers is dropped off at Marine Customs Unlimited for custom paintwork and a tricked out dash panel. Barry meets with the professionals at Castaway Customs to have sea deck cut and placed onto the deck and the experts from Lenco Marine visit Surehold Studios to fit and install brand new trim tabs. Okay, a couple weeks have passed and a lot has been done in the Albury project boat in that time. My good friend Brian O'Donnell over at Marine Customs Unlimited shoots a show called Project Dreamboat at his boatyard. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to get some stuff done that was outside of our wheelhouse. So we had his team take a look at doing our bottom paint, a new boot stripe, redoing the non-skid on the gunnels, the rub rail, and upgrading the dash a little bit. So let's take a look at the amazing job the team at MCU did on this segment of Project Dreamboat. This is actually an authentic, original Albury that was built over on Manor War K in the Abaco, Bahamas. It's about 15 years old. It's been out in that Bahamas sun getting beat up. This customer actually owns Surehold Industries, so he's very detail-oriented. They've buffed and waxed this boat. They've got it really clean. So really, what's all he needs is a little more electronics on the dash, some plastic work, some paint work, and we'll be able to put this thing together. It's going to look awesome when it's done. All right, back at it again, working on a 23-foot Allberry Brothers boat. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a bootstripe to it. The biggest thing you gotta remember is when you're taping off, to use fine line. It's a little more expensive, but the end result gives you that nice, crisp, clean line that you're gonna look for. This is a great way to customize your boat. Multiple ways of doing it. You can spray it, you can have it rolled on, or you can go ahead and just get a vinyl decal of it. My personal opinion, spraying it on is gonna be the best way. It's gonna give you the best result and the longest lasting. The next thing he wants to do is change up the non-skid. The one cool thing is you wanna take the gray from inside the boat and have it come around the cap of it, really to give a custom touch. The biggest thing to worry about when you're dealing with existing non-skid is you wanna make sure you get all of it sanded. You don't wanna have a lot of glossy areas because then the paint's just not gonna stick. Now when we sprayed this boat, we were just doing the cap. Biggest thing with that is bagging it off. Like I've said a thousand times before, it is the biggest crucial key point to make sure that you have no overspray going anywhere you don't want it to go. I wound up actually having to tape myself into the boat to make sure that I was covered completely. Now we got lucky on this one. We got an all grip chart out and we were actually able to match the color to Whisper Gray, which is a standard color for all grip. Went around the boat a handful of times till I was comfortable with the way it looked and then we were done. It was on the bottom paint. All right, so the boat was sandblasted for me. So it was pretty easy. I just went underneath there and kind of touched things up, sanded it, made sure that everything looked good. There was no big divots or anything that needed to be repaired. The next step we did was we used a two-part epoxy barrier coat. That's gonna help any water intrusion getting towards the hull of your boat while it sits in the water. Once we finished the epoxy barrier coat, we went ahead and went on to bottom paint. Now, the owner decided to go with a black tie in the rubber braille and some of the other stuff. We used a regular nine inch roller. We followed the manufacturer's guidelines on what nap to use and, and how many coats to put on. Now obviously there are some areas around the motor and a couple other things like if you had a trim tabs, you're not gonna be able to fit a big roller in there. You can take a little two inch disposable brush and just kind of dab it in and help it kind of blend out. Now that I'm done, it's on to Robbie. So get the cameras out. I got more work to do, guys. All right, so Brian's got me over here installing the rub rail for the Allberry Brothers. Well, the taco rub rails mainly come already pre-drilled. They're usually every six inches. I mean, they come in 20-foot straight pieces, so you can't, don't want to bend it too far. It'll snap. So you soften it up with a little heat, get it warm, make it round, and screw as you go. And then after you put the insert in, the insert is actually what actually takes the hit when you're rubbing up against a dock or a pylon. That's what the actual protection is on the boat. I think it totally changes the look of the boat. I mean, the boat just looks unfinished until it gets a rub rail on it. it makes it really come together in the end. They brought in this 23 Allberry. Uh, we're going to make a custom dash panel for it. We started out in this project working on the top part of the console. There was some existing holes. We didn't need to go really thick on the material, so we chose quarter inch. It will, it will serve the purpose. We moved on to the middle section in the bottom where your helm's going to go. We go with a little bit thicker material because of the structural. 
with your monitor and stuff, you don't want that to uh, crack, so the heavier, the thicker material is a better option at this point. Once we had all the panels cut, fit, it looked good. I went ahead and uh, officially make the layout, and uh, doing so, you gotta split some fractions and stuff like that, and I'm not gifted in math, man. So the iPhone has been awesome. It has a great app, I'm not gonna lie. It'll all help you out and make everything in line. Sometimes when we get pieces and we kind of realize, hey, this is the hot thing right now, we'll go ahead and make a uh, jig that'll have that cut out laid out for us. So we're able to, it's just more efficient later on for us. It gives it a better product, you know, because it's consistent. You're gonna wanna put a pilot hole in. Um, the acrylics, you gotta be careful because if you don't use the right bit, you, you can blow it out, crack the panel, um, router it out, give it a nice clean hole. Looks like a machine did it in most cases, and that's what we try to do here. After that, we went outside to the boat and started to prep it for epoxy and gluing it down. So we're gonna, we want the effect of no screws. We mix up a little bit of a two-part epoxy, and we use a combination of 5200 and uh, a lot of clamps. And I can't stress that enough. We use the epoxy because it's fast set, and uh, the 5200 does take a little bit longer for it to cure. So over time, the epoxy really is irrelevant because it'll actually uh, kind of crack away if the boat's flexing a lot. The 5200 will not. It'll keep its properties and hold that panel on there, but it has some, it'll let it move a little bit. The epoxy helps us just set it a little quicker and hold the panel from shifting. You're going to see that I use an awful lot of clamps, a couple different styles, squeeze clamps, uh, C clamps, because certain parts of the boat you can only get a certain type of clamp in there, so it's a good, have, have a good variety. So while we we're uh, using all these clamps and tape and everything, Mother Nature decided to give us another curveball yet again. We, we waited a little bit. We were able to get back out there and wrap it up and uh, get everything glued down. And uh, we're going to let it sit 24 hours. Um, unless Brian's got more stuff for me to do, then it could be 36 to 48 hours. And then we'll get back on the boat and uh, go ahead and finish installing all of our components. So after we waited our 24 hour period, we were able to get up on the boat. Very complicated procedure here. You gotta be careful removing the clamps. You don't wanna drop them, then you have to bend over. When you're removing the clamps, you're looking for the 5200 to look like you had good seal, so usually it oozes out evenly all around your opening. This way you know you got good adhere, ad, adhere, adhesion. Good adhesion. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. So after everything's all removed and said and done, um, just give it another another final look and kind of notice needed just a little bit of touch up work. So I use my barrel sander to just make sure everything just slides in nice and easy because you don't want to snap stuff in there because then you can you can snap and crack your acrylic. So in this project on the dash panel, we're we're installing a bunch of these new cup holders because everybody's using the, the big tumbler cups now like Angle makes, and uh, these really accept it real nice. They won't blow out as you're underway on the waterway and whatnot. After the cup holders were installed, we went ahead and installed our uh, chart plotter, depth finder, and then we moved on to our Yamaha products. We put in our binnacle, key switch, and our Yamaha gauge. And after all the setbacks we had, um, it was just real, real fulfilling to have this thing done. And I hope the customer enjoys it. All right, Barry, so basically we had a couple of holes we had to fill just to make it to where we had a solid area. We glass and glue everything in. Black acrylic really came out nice. We custom cut everything to fit. We polished all the edges nice on the outside. It's a really yep. nice layout. It came out really good. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. And then uh, we got the two-tone on the non-skid. You guys redid all our non-skid. The non-skid came out really nice. I was really glad with the selection we went with on the color. It really tied into the existing stuff on the inside. I know you had to bring the wife in to yep. check to make yep. sure we she had was going to make sure we had the right happy color. with it. And uh, it really worked out good. And I, I hope you guys really like it. Yeah. It really finished off nicely following out to that black rub rail. That really completed the boat. Yeah, yeah, the, the boat needed the new rub rail. And then the bottom paint, you guys did that sandblasting first. Yeah, we because completely we stripped all the bottom. All the years. old layers and years of paint, it's actually gonna make the boat more efficient. You're gonna notice that the next time you get out okay. on the boat and run it. And right. with that nice Yamaha gauge, and you're gonna be able to see your gallon per hour burn and everything, you're gonna notice some major savings in fuel economy. Okay, well, well, you and your team did a great job. I really appreciate it. We gotta get the boat back to the shop. We have a bunch more projects we gotta do before this boat's ready to go back in the water for us. Once we got the boat back from MCU, Sam and I had the task of putting in all new steering hydraulic lines and rigging tube to get the boat all set for steering. 
We got our helm unit and cylinder unit from Seastar. They make some great stuff. Now, it was really important to me when we were doing that project that everything came up through the center of the splash well. I wanted to make sure once we got both those swim platforms on the boat, there were no tripping hazards on either side. Now that that is all complete, tomorrow we're sending the boat up to Rockledge, Florida to see our friends at Castaway Customs to talk about where we're going to do some sea deck across the boat. As soon as we arrived, Tyler, the owner of Castaway Customs, the largest Sea Deck distributor and installer in the state of Florida, was ready to get started. He had a really cool digital templating machine, and he used this to trace out all the different areas we discussed putting Sea Deck. All this data was pulled into their CAD system where the designers were able to lay out the parts digitally and get them ready for cutting. Once designed, I reviewed the color options with Tyler and the material was off to the cutting tables. These CNC cutting tables not only cut out the shape of the pad, but they also have several internal tool heads that automatically change. With these tools, they can engrave all kinds of designs and patterns into the material. From there, with Tyler's keen eye and steady hand, he installed all the pads down using the built-in adhesive backing. The areas I chose to cover were the bow floor, the splash well, and the two swim platforms. This should provide additional comfort and non-slip protection in these key areas. Castaway Customs did a great job. Now the boat is headed back to the studio where we have an appointment with the guys from Lenco to talk about trim tabs. Okay guys, welcome back to Sherhold Studios and we're getting towards the end of our 23 foot Allberry project boat and I got my good friend here, Joe Walco from Lenco Marine. And I brought you in here because one of the things we noticed when we brought the boat back from the Bahamas is a lot of porpoising at the higher speeds. And I think that's because it's got a pretty nice size engine, the 300 horsepower. And I know you specialize in trim tabs. So is that something we can correct? And, and how would they help this boat? By use of the trim tabs, we're definitely going to be able to control the position of the vessel through the water. And we're going to really get that porpoising under, under control. It's going to make you and your passengers a lot more comfortable as they're out riding around in this vessel. OK, now besides getting rid of the porpoising, are there other benefits to putting the tabs on the boat that I'm going to see? Yes. We can use the tabs to correct for if the weight uh, displacement is a little bit wrong. If we have a list to one side or the other, we can use the tabs to correct that. We can use the tabs when you're getting on plane. We can actually use the tabs to help the vessel get on plane quicker. Okay. And then we can stay on plane at a lower speed. We can really help to Im improve your fuel efficiency with uh, really? proper use of the trim tabs. Yes. Okay, so that's going to improve it. It's not going to hurt. So even though I got tabs down in the water creating some drag, that's not going to hurt my fuel efficiency. Yes. What happens when we deploy the tab, it redirects the water coming off the running surface of the hull, and it actually lifts the whole running surface out of the water. Okay. So even though we have a 12 inch by 12 inch area, Area that we're putting into the water, we're creating a very small amount of drag, we're lifting so much of the hull out of the water that it's actually going to increase your speed and it's going to increase your fuel efficiency. Well, I'm really excited to see how this changes the ride of the boat and I'm sure it's going to greatly improve it, but before we could ride it, we got to get it in. So let's take a look. I got Joe here with his team from Lenco and they're going to show us how to get these in and everything we need to know. So I'm going to let you go to it. All right. Thank okay. you. Thanks. All right, we're going to begin the uh, trim tab installation on the port side of this vessel. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to get the swim platform out of the way and give us a little room to work in here. We're going to apply some tape to the transom. It's going to make it easier for us to put some marks on there to determine where we're going to put the trim tab. The first mark that we're going to make on here, we're going to scribe a line 3 eighths of an inch up from the running surface. 
Now, normally we would recommend that you mount the tab about four inches in from the hard chine, but this particular vessel has a rounded hull shape, so we're actually going to move it in about five inches so that we can get a nice flat surface to mount the tab. We want the trailing edge of the tab to be about three quarters of an inch above the running surface. Now we're going to hold the trim tab up where we marked our holes previously, and then we're going to pre-drill all of our holes. Now the upper bracket has four holes in it. We have three outer holes that we use to mount the actuator to the transom, and then we have a hole in the center. That's where the wire passes through. We're going to drill the three outer holes with a 3 16 drill bit. The center hole will be drilled with a 3 8 drill bit. Now we're going to assemble our actuator to our tab and begin our installation. We're going to apply some sealant in the area where we drilled the holes previously. Now that we have our sealant applied, we're going to begin installing the fasteners for the tab. All right, we're now going to pass the wire forward through the transom and then begin mounting the upper bracket. Now we're going to install the upper fastener that connects the actuator to the upper mounting bracket. Now we're going to begin installing the switch. He's going to hand tighten the bezel nut on the back of the switch to secure it in place. Kevin is connecting the wires with the red tracers to the port side and the wires with the green tracers to the starboard side. The power pigtail should be connected through a 20 amp circuit breaker or fuse. And we're going to test the system to make sure that it works properly. When I press the buttons on the starboard side of the keypad, it operates the port side trim tab. Now I'm going to press the buttons on the port side of the keypad and make sure that it operates the starboard tab. Now I'm going to retract both of them and shut the system down. All right, we've tested the system and it works perfectly. So those trim tabs look like they're operating perfectly. The installation is absolutely beautiful. I love how they're tucked up under and hidden uh, by the swim platform. I really got to thank you guys. You did an amazing job putting this in for us. I really all appreciate right. it. We still got some wiring to take care of, clean it all up, make it look nice. We got battery chargers and a bunch of other stuff going in the boat. So we're going to get all the wiring fit and finish looking really, really nice here over the next couple days. But other than that, this looks good, and I will let you know how she rides as soon as we get her back in the water. All right, Barry, thank you very much. Thanks again for joining us. On the next segment of Project SureFun, the owner of Mate Series stops by Surehold Studios to install their combo rod holder cup holders in the gunnels of the Albury. Barry and Sam work on a large punch list of final items, from wiring the new stereo speakers to polishing the stainless work, before finally applying a protective coat of Pro Polish Wax and splashing her in the water for the very first time, after a complete transformation. Really? Sam must be messing with me. There we go. Clean and simple. <laughs>